According to Greek philosopher Aristotle, art imitates nature. The digital age presents a significant transformation between humans and creating art. In this evolution of storytelling, how has recent technology impact the creative process? Christopher Castillo, better known as Christography the Photographer, is a South Florida highlight. From Miami's Three Points Music Festival to New York Fashion Week, his photos reflect his diligence as a content creator. The storytelling aspect is huge. Um, when it comes to being able to lay out 10 photos on Instagram, which is the max you can do so, I try to take advantage of those 10 slides. Um, I wouldn't even call them models. In my world, they're considered characters. Characters with a life, a story, uh, a meaning. And I try to show them in the process of action. Ariel Baron Robbins is a jack of all trades. Between painting, photography, and digital art, her passion drives her to explore traditional and unconventional spaces in art. I think workflow is actually a really good way of making sure that your, your style is consistent. So like, I have a workflow where I usually work from video that I take of myself, right? And then I either take stills from that video or I actually take chunks of that video and then run them through AI, um, different visual video to video AIs. If you can have a particular type of workflow that can keep your style consistent and then it's no different than using clay or oil or any other, you know, any other medium. A feud is brewing between OpenAI and the New York Times. Well, the New York Times is taking OpenAI and Microsoft to court. The New York Times has filed a lawsuit in federal court against Microsoft and ChatGPT. In 2023, the New York Times sued OpenAI and Microsoft for copyright infringement. The New York Times claims the program illegally used the Times' proprietary and protected information to train the large language models. In the rise of regulating generative AI, it's important to understand how these technologies operate. Data scientist and founder of biotech startup, Animal Bionics, Ian Sons, explains how the software operates. First, the system has to be trained. It will consume millions of images with labels, blocks of text describing what the model is seeing in the scene, what is being depicted in the image. And after it consumes millions of training samples like that, the model will learn to create associations between the label of text and the image that is associated with it. So that during the second process or the second step, when the user gives it a brand new input, an input that it might have not even seen during training, the model will do its best to recombine the patterns and structures that it uncovered during training to satisfy the user's request, to align the output with the input, and to mimic the behavior or the associations which it saw in the training data. As emerging and existing creatives find value in the software, the lines blur when discussing ownership for generated content. Intellectual property lawyer and professor Travis Hannibal explains how media and creatives actively employ copyright laws against generative AI companies. It may be that the systems know what their work says, not because a copy of their work is inside of the system, but because other people discuss their work. And so the AI system has access to bits and pieces of the work from many different places. And the person found the complaint doesn't actually have proof that their whole work is, is in the system somewhere. You don't necessarily need exact clarity as to what has happened. You have, you need to have a plausible or, or early stage case, and then you develop it during the litigation process. You demand evidence from the defendant. Then you have a trial as to what actually went on. So the loophole is you don't actually have to prove your case at the very beginning. While media and tech companies resolve their differences in court, Content creators have their own concerns regarding generative AI. It, it, I feel like it definitely saturates the market for a lot of creatives, not just photographers, but also graphic designers. 
I, ever since AI became a huge thing, I've been receiving some kind of some comments um, through social media about how like, dude, it's crazy. I thought this was AI for a moment, and I don't know. I I, I didn't really feel too good about it <laughs> at first. I think it still has a long way to go, and there definitely has to be a a medium for control. But um, we'll see where that goes. If somebody, if somebody used my artwork, first of all, I would be extremely flattered. I think that artists that really worry about this, they're like worried about their their sales. I suppose, um, like I said, five billion images. Uh, your work better be pretty famous for people to even say in the style of blank as their prompt for an AI. The person doing that is doing that for some sort of conceptual reason. And if they weren't, then they would just be ripping me off. And why would anybody, if, if other people want to buy a ripoff, I mean, that that's on them. Most people want to buy the, the authentic thing. The 2023 writers and actors strike challenged the ethics between film and television in using generative AI. Although officials passed regulations for well-established creatives and organizations, the increasing lawsuits between media conglomerates and generative AI programs reveal hidden concerns within the copyright system. I think about how these companies use this very copyright system all the time to suppress and to bully independent creatives, to DMCA their videos on platforms or their music on streaming platforms. So we need to ask ourselves, if these large copyright conglomerates win these lawsuits, are we essentially just strengthening a copyright system which currently over leverages these large media conglomerates and we're doing it by pretending that we're trying to defend, to protect the livelihood of independent artists. As generative AI integrates into society, their challenges undermines its potential. Virtual librarian Melissa Del Castillo developed Florida International University's Generative AI Resource website. Each listed tool provides leverage and accessibility to students' workflow. So I think Generative AI is going to become just, you know, another tool in the toolbox for individuals creating content. What Generative AI is going to offer is accessibility. It's going to give access to individuals that were not previously counted among creators. Creatives need to test generative AI programs to push for regulations. As AI developers open new doors between art and individuals, finding a balance to protect one's work is crucial. Simply put, everyone has the right to be a creative in their own way. Most artists love to be disruptive. Like a lot of artists love to be disruptive. So we love to see something and then we're like, okay, how can we push the limit of that thing and maybe even break it? I mean, artists break boundaries and they break, they try, to lim they try to find the limits of society. That's why they're so important in our world. I know that there's always gonna be a, a wing of artists that are trying to mess technology up and figure out what it can do wrong. So the rest of people can make it perfect. And then there'll be a group, including me, that will try to figure out how to break it. I, I feel like at some point, I'm definitely gonna have to tone into the idea of just being able to use some artificial intelligence in my work. My first attempt at ever creating using generative fill, which is a tool uh, used on Photoshop, is being able to pan out an entire photo of mine and being able to see what AI can do with that photo. I do feel like in that aspect, I may want to try it out in cases of errors, um, but I wouldn't fall to the idea of just using it strictly for all my work. In this ever-evolving landscape for creatives, Ariel and Chris embody different styles. However, their values and authenticity and originality illustrates their belief in what it means to be a true artist. That is, to rise against conformity and execute their own vision. <laughs>